All right, good morning, and welcome to the University of Vermont. Uh, we are here at UVM uh, because the Attorney General's Consumer Assistant Program is part of the University of Vermont. It's been a great partnership for the last uh, 30 years. And it really was the Consumer Assistance Program that dealt firsthand with the Equifax breach that occurred in September of 2017. And we are here to announce a national settlement and what Vermont's share of that settlement is regarding the Equifax breach that occurred in September of 2017. I'm Attorney General TJ Donovan. Joined uh, with me this morning is Charity Clark, my Chief of Staff, uh, Chris Curtis, the Chief of our Public Protection uh, Division, Ryan Krieger, uh, who was the attorney uh, who worked on this uh, national settlement, Chris, Crystal Baldwin from our Consumer Assistance Program and uh, members of our Consumer Assistance Program. When the Equifax breach happened in September of 2017, the phones at CAP did not stop ringing. 251,000 Vermonters were affected as a result of the Equifax breach. 148 million Americans were affected as a result of the Equifax breach. All consumers had their social security numbers, their birth data, and their address information compromised. Some consumers had their driver license, credit card numbers, and some credit dispute documents were jeopardized. When that breach became public, our consumer assistance program worked around the clock taking phone calls from Vermonters. We received over 700 phone calls that first weekend because people, Vermonters, were rightfully scared. When you're talking about a data breach, you're talking about a higher risk of identity theft. You are talking about a higher risk of being scammed. The bottom line is this, because of this data breach, Vermonters felt anxious, scared, that their financial livelihood was on the line. They rightfully should have been scared. We are in a online, digital, global economy. Scams are on the rise. This Equifax breach demonstrated that. That's why we joined with our colleagues around this country to hold Equifax responsible. And I'm happy to announce today that Vermont is part of a national settlement which will total close to $650 million. Let me give you the breakdown of that money. And the most important part of this is about the consumers who were affected. $425 million will go towards a restitution fund. And I'm gonna talk about that more in a minute. $175 million will go to the states. Between 50 to 100 million will go to the Federal Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Out of the 175 million to the states, the state of Vermont will, re will receive $1.85 million. Those funds will go into our state's general fund. As I said, we had 251,000 consumers impacted out of 139 million consumers nationwide that, co that were covered in this settlement. That is 0.18% of consumers, and that equals our share in terms of the settlement. The effective date of this payment is August 22nd, 2019. The payment will be made within 30 days of the effective date. Now, regarding the restitution fund, 300 million is guaranteed payment that must be paid to consumers. That means Vermonters. How do you make yourself eligible and what is eligible in terms of the restitution? Here's the quick part. Many consumers spend a lot of time on the phone making sure that their money was safe. Consumers can submit claims for time, for time spent dealing with this breach. If you spend any time dealing with this breach, you're eligible for 25 bucks per hour, up to 20 hours for time spent dealing with a breach. On the phone, calling us, talking to your bank, freezing your credit. If Vermonters spent time making sure that their money was safe, you were eligible for restitution up to 20 hours at $25 an hour. Secondly, if you have documented out-of-pocket expenses, and we're gonna talk more about that later. You're gonna be eligible up to reimbursement of up to $20,000. 
everybody will be eligible if you're an affected consumer for three free credit monitoring <laughs> credit monitoring for affected consumers. If you don't like one of the th three <laughs> options in terms of the credit monitoring, consumers can opt for a cash payment and use it to purchase credit monitoring from another vendor. As I said, those out-of-pocket expenses like freezes or credit monitoring purchased apart from Equifax's offer are reimbursable. If that $300 million is exhausted, that additional $125 million in funds will become payable if the original fund amount is exhausted. In terms of the monitoring services, you, for adults, you will have free three bureau credit monitoring for up to four years. The monitoring will include a 1 million identity theft insurance policy. After those three bureau monitoring expenses expires, consumers will get one bureau monitoring for six more years. And if you're a minor, if you're a kid, you'll have free 18 years of credit monitoring, four years uh, plus 14 years for one bureau monitoring. Two free credit reports every 12 months for five years and Equifax won't charge anyone for credit freezes or any of the earlier breach responses and no upselling to other services. This is a good settlement for Vermonters. This is good for consumers. But most importantly, what this breach did was to raise awareness about online security. That as I said, we live in a global digital economy. More and more of our financial tractions are being done online. That raises the risk level for scams and for these breaches. Vermont has one of the strongest and most ro robust data breach notification laws in the country. That's a good thing. Why we have that is so we can protect consumers, so we can tell consumers when their money is at risk. When we are in a world where people have it anxiety and angst and uncertainty about their financial futures, we have to do everything we can as a state to protect them. And given Vermonters the knowledge, the information, and the tools to protect their money, their retirement, and their livelihood is good consumer protection. That's what this settlement does today. That's why I'm proud to be a member of this national settlement to bring this money back to the state of Vermont, and more importantly, to open up avenues so Vermonters who are affected can get paid back for the time they spent making sure that their money was safe. With that, let me turn it over to Chris Curtis, the Chief of my Public Protection Division. Chris. Great, thank you, uh, General Donovan. Again, my name is Chris Curtis. I'm Chief of the Public Protection Division at the uh, Office of the Attorney General. I wanna invite Ryan Krieger, one of my colleagues and our Assistant Attorney General who uh, worked on this matter for our office uh, to the podium. Ryan has done an outstanding job. And I also wanna thank Crystal Baldwin and our entire Consumer Assistance Program team for all of the work that they have done to reassure Vermonters in the wake of this data breach and others. Um, when these things happen, this office is responsive. And General Donovan has made uh, this issue uh, a top priority for our office. And Vermonters should know that we've redoubled our efforts with respect to data privacy, consumer privacy, um, security breach, all of our outreach efforts uh, in this area. And the Attorney General has made that a priority for our office. The truth is, the future of consumer protection is online. We have a long and historic tradition in, this, in the state of Vermont of protecting consumers. And many of those laws are responsive to the face-to-face -face transaction, the Vermont handshake, the understanding between parties. But increasingly, we live in a wired world and those transactions are happening in cyberspace. So it is crucially important that this office be responsive and be bold in making sure that there is accountability, there's transparency, and that there is an effort uh, with respect to both our education and outreach efforts and our public policy initiatives, that those are reflected in this office. And that's what Attorney General Donovan has done. And that's in part what this settlement is helping to do as well. It's a broad recognition, almost an endorsement of the efforts of this office in that area, that we are going to make sure uh, that Vermonters feel secure and that when there's a breach, there is accountability, that there is restitution available for Vermonters, as in this case, where it's warranted, 
um, and that we can have preventive measures in the future. So ongoing credit monitoring, all of those security measures that will be in place for affected Vermonters going forward, critically important. I want to note that two years ago, when news of this uh, massive breach broke, um, not only did the Consumer Assistance Program triage, in fact, our entire office, we had attorneys taking calls from consumers that were alarmed, hundreds and hundreds of telephone calls from concern, concerned Vermonters all across the state. But that wasn't enough. The Attorney General directed our office to work with our partners in the legislature to have community meetings. We went to Barton, to Springfield, to Bennington, to Burlington, all over the state to convene community meetings to address Vermonters face to face and tell them what they could do to take steps to protect themselves, how to prevent identity theft from happening, how to secure a credit freeze on their accounts. And even that wasn't enough because subsequently we worked with our partners in the legislature to make sure that Vermont eliminated fees to place security freezes on their credit files so that no Vermonter would have to pay to put a freeze on their credit so that they can help protect uh, their identities at no cost to themselves. That obviously was a law that took effect going forward in time. So for Vermonters that heard about the news and immediately acted to protect themselves, they may have incurred costs. Another reason why this settlement is so important so they can get reimbursed for those costs that they may have incurred. So this is a crucially important settlement. It's going to have, uh, I think, major importance across the country for consumers, for federal agencies, and of course for um, our state. And uh, we're very pleased to be part of this today. I wanted to, um, Ryan, if there's anything you want to add vis-a-vis -vis our outreach efforts or with respect to, uh, oh, I, I do want to note um, that Attorney Krieger has done an amazing job of helping us to facilitate working group proposals both as to uh, privacy matters, along with our chief of staff, Charity Clark, they have spearheaded the effort on privacy working group. Um, there is a bill pending in the legislature on uh, additional privacy measures in the future that may help to ameliorate some of these kinds of issues in the future. And of course, we had a uh, data broker working group that resulted in the nation's first data broker registration law. So all of these activities are part and parcel of this new frontier um, new online consumer protections. Our office is proud to be a part of it, and we're proud to get this matter resolved for Vermonters today. And with that, I want to um, open it up to our Chief of Staff, Charity Clark, and she can share with you what Vermonters can do to better protect themselves. All right, so uh, as Chief of Staff, one of my responsibilities is that I, I'm lucky enough to oversee the Consumer Assistance Program, which is located here at UVM. And um, they have, uh, I want to reiterate what others have said, they did a phenomenal job in the aftermath of the breach of being available to Vermonters. They had a website up literally the first day. People didn't know where to turn and they, they knew in Vermont because we were so responsive. So I was very proud of that. I thought it would be helpful if um, I shared some tips about identity theft. And I also, the Consumer Assistance Program, brought these handy dandy uh, brochures for you that um, can help with a recovery plan if you do have a, an identity theft situation on your hands. These are free from the FTC, so we have a bunch. I'll, I'll pass them out because they really have a lot of great information. And um, let me say uh, what some of those tips are. So the first step is we should all be reviewing our credit report every year. You can get a free credit report going to annualcreditreport.com. And just looking it over, and making sure there's no inaccuracies or suspicious activity. When I'm talking about suspicious activity, I'm talking about things like credit card accounts that you did not open, address changes that you didn't initiate, um, loans that you did not take out, things like that. And if you do find suspicious activity on your credit report, there are recommended steps to take. The first thing that you should do is call the company where the fraud occurred to let them know, I did not open up this credit card account, um, I need to close it, and let them know that you believe you may be the victim of identity theft. You should change your password, your logins, your PIN numbers, and then contact the credit reporting agencies to ask for a correction to your, to your credit uh, report. And um, the FTC is incredibly helpful. Not only do they have this brochure, but you can go online at identitytheft.gov, identitytheft.gov, 
and they will walk you through a plan that would work best for you. Some of the other things that might be recommended are to put a fraud alert on your credit report. That means that when someone is looking something up, it'll kind of have a red flag on it to alert them. You know, this person may have been the victim of identity theft, so just be careful um, here. And you can also freeze your credit. That used to cost money, and it doesn't anymore. So you can freeze your credit and unfreeze it without paying anything. So that's available as well. And um, the other step that we always recommend at, uh, at CAP when folks call is to contact your local police and make a report of identity theft. You can use the police report that you'll fill out. If you need it down the road, you might need to demonstrate to someone this happened to me, and you can have that in your file. Um, with all of this, with identity theft, be sure to keep really good records, keep a file, and who you talk to and when, and it'll help you as you, you know, move forward. Um, so those are just some of the resources that we wanted to bring to your attention, and like I said, I can pass these out that if there are any uh, use to you. So thanks so much. Thanks, Charity. All right, thank you, Charity. So here's, this is where we need your help. How do Vermonters get their money? Here's the website, EquifaxBreachSettlement.com. This is gonna be the website, EquifaxBreachSettlement.com, where Vermonters will go to submit their claims, whether it's for the time spent, again, 25 bucks per hour, up to 20 hours, for just time spent. EquifaxBreachSettlement.com. Secondly, if you have those out-of-pocket losses, EquifaxBreachSettlement.com. If you have out-of-pocket losses, it's up to $20,000 reimbursable. So those are the big two uh, restitution um, issues for Vermonters. Uh, to be paid back, you got to submit a claim. In addition to that, the free three credit monitoring services that will be provided to all affected consumers. So please get this website out, and Vermonters should go to EquifaxBreachSettlement.com. I don't want to confuse matters, but there's another website too. The FTC just explain what that is, Ryan, please. Um. So the Federal Trade Commission has set up, uh, the Federal Trade Commission was one of the parties in this settlement. They have set up a website. Uh, all you have to do is Google FTC Equifax Settlement and it's going to be the first thing that comes up. That's probably the easiest way to get there. Um, and on that website there is a link that you can click on and you will get email updates regarding the settlement. That's important because on that EquifaxBreachSettlement.com, there is a judge in Atlanta that it, uh, needs to approve this settlement, and once that approval comes through, some of the things on the Breach Settlement website will go live that might not be live right now. So if people go immediately to that website, they might not be able to take advantage of all the other things. We suspect that within a week, uh, everything will be live on that website. Thank you. Okay, so to get updates, the FTC website to submit your claim is gonna be Equifax Settlement, uh, EquifaxBreachSettlement.com if our partners in the media could put that information out we would appreciate that so with that let me just again thank my team i want to thank our partnership with uh, the university of vermont i want to thank the students at uvm who were on the phones talking to vermonters it is a great testament to the quality of students here at the university of vermont and to the institution itself uh, for having such mature responsible uh, the young professionals that the Attorney General's Office relies on uh, to handle uh, consumer issues. I just want to say this about CAP. 13,000 calls a year we get to the Consumer Assistance Program from Vermonters. I think we're the only place in state government where you actually get a real live person on the phone. That's why we get so many calls. We're not going to be able to answer every question, but we do our best to navigate the bureaucracy of state government to get information to Vermonters to solve their problems. That's how government should work. That's what we're doing here at the Attorney General's Office, working with UVM and working with our CAP program. So with that, let me conclude and open it up for any questions. Joe. You said what, 256,000 Vermonters have security breach? Uh, 251, the exact number is this, 251, 419, 251,419 Vermonters were affected, 148 million total Americans. So, I'm trying to do my math here, yeah. it comes to like $7 a person. Uh, uh, your math is better than mine, Joe. <laughs> do you think that's enough? You uh, uh, yeah. Secure, this is a severe um, security. Yeah, I think when you are part of a national settlement, 
um, which we are in this case, and we are in many other cases historically uh, as well. Uh, it comes down to an equation in order to try to uh, bring about fairness and population and the number of affected consumers is always going to be part of that, that um, equation. So I think the exact math, and I may be wrong about this, but this is what I have, 251,000 consumers impacted out of 139 million consumers is 0.18 of consumers. And our share of the penalties is about 1%, 1.05%. So that's the ballpark, and I think the math does work on that. And when you're in these national settlements, it comes down to the affected consumer's population, and it's always going to be uh, an equation. What did Equifax do wrong? Uh, I mean, was, there, was it willful? Was it an accident? Was it well, I'm going to ask Ryan Krieger to... to Sure. explain that and, and to talk also about the I, I think the importance of our uh, data notification security law sure so the key thing that Equifax did wrong was not having sufficient data security um, and that is often the case when we see these data breaches it is possible to have a data breach and still have done everything within your power uh, the bad guys are often uh, just that good that was not the case here uh, Equifax had some pretty bad data security. Uh, in particular, there was a vulnerability called the Struts vulnerability. It was a known vulnerability that Equifax should have patched. They did not patch it. Um, they were, the bad guys were able to get to a database by logging in uh, through the internet. It was a database with a lot of data that probably should not have been easily accessible from the, data, from the internet. And another really important part of this settlement is there is an entire uh, data security regime that Equifax is going to have to implement uh, in order to comply with this settlement. So, so they have to have much better data security going forward. And is, is it still true two years later that no one has been provably um, exposed, not exposed, but there, there has been no uh, actual damage yet? These, these stolen files have not been used yet, is that correct? Um, that is really hard to say. I don't know that the uh, files have been, say, dumped onto the dark web for purchase. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not being used. Identity theft happens all the time. Were the bad guys using this tranche of data to do that? It's, it's hard to sometimes uh, tie an individual ID theft to an individual harm. Although in this case, if someone was affected by the breach and they did suffer ID theft, they will be able to submit receipts to try to get uh, reimbursed. Who were the hackers? I don't know that they were identified. We don't know. Uh, I, I don't believe so. I, I can look into that deeper and get back to you afterwards, but I, I'm not sure they were identified. Um, do, do you have to do anything to sign up for the 10 years of free credit monitoring? You are going to have to go to the Equifax breach uh, settlement website. Yes. You have to ask for it. Yes. K R I G E R. I, I do want to. I know that there was a mention of the FTC website. One benefit of going to that website, and it is just, it's very simple. It's ftc.gov backslash Equifax. So if you uh, can put that out there as well, um, consumers can sign up today to get email alerts so that when the um, National Claims Administrator website goes live or portions of that start to go live, they can get email notifications through the FTC that that's happening. So that is one action step that a consumer could take today so that even if the settlement website isn't fully up and running until after the orders are approved uh, and so on and so forth, the FTC will keep people updated. So if you want to know and not have to be checking back yourself every day on that website or looking for the news about when the settlement is approved, you can sign up for the FTC uh, through the FTC website for email updates and alerts that will keep you apprised as the process unfolds. So. The judge's uh, decision is expected when? When will the money start flowing? Uh, it, it's impossible to say for sure. We are hoping and suspecting that within a few days it will come okay. down. Yes. Well, I'm going to conclude the press conference before I, I file a consumer complaint because of the paint fumes in the room. Uh, but with that, um, if there's no other questions, thanks for coming. Appreciate it.